This video is a part of the template series, which assumes you already know the basics of how templates work, as well as how the ones available on the ecosystem work together using the interact event and other such conventions. More info in the description of this video. Hello and welcome to the blank interactable template tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be learning how to get the blank interactable template off the ecosystem and use it to create our own interactable objects. So first things first, I have the ecosystem open up here and you can see here if you search by templates, or if you just search blank interactable template, you should get these results here. And this is what we want right now, a blank interactable template. So if I go ahead and get this and I hit import. Okay, now you can see this is green. We have it imported, so I'll close this. And now when I come over to my assets, to Playmaker, templates, you can see we have this blank interactable template. So up here in the top left hand corner, it says this blank interactable template is best used by using the paste template option and to then program the specifics yourself before finally turning it into your own template.asset. Okay, so what it's talking about is if you go ahead and let's just create an empty here. And if we select this empty, you can always add an FSM to a game object by coming over here to add component and then selecting FSM, or you can come over here into the Playmaker editor when you have your game object selected and you can see it says right click to add FSM. So I'm gonna right click to add. And instead of just adding an FSM and instead of using a template, I'm going to paste a template. And you'll see that we have this category, blank template, and then we have this blank interactable template. So what happens when you use paste template, if I click on that, it pastes all the information from the template into this FSM without actually using the template itself. So this FSM is not a template. You can see up here in the component, it's just it names it as such, and it kind of gives us all the information that was inside of the template. But if you edited this thing, if I say add a new state, that won't affect the blank interactable template itself. So I come over here, select blank interactable template, and you see that new state is not here. If I select my game object, so this is a sort of separate FSM altogether now, it's just using the template as a base. So I'm just gonna get rid of this really quick. So that's what this is about, this saying paste the template option. And when you're done sort of turning this into your own thing, you can come in here and right click, and then save template, and then save it as your own template. So for us right now, this isn't really doing anything. Let's decide what we're gonna do with this. For example, what you could do is use a blank interactable template to open and close this door. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this game object for now. I'm gonna select the door, right click, paste template, blank interactable template. Okay, now in standby, I'm gonna rename this state to door closed. And in this in use section, I'm going to name it to door open. Okay, so this is the state that it starts in. And then when somebody interacts with it, it goes down to here for a little buffer. And these buffers, by the way, are just a way to prevent the FSM from looping with one click. Because sometimes if you click, this all happens so fast that by the time it comes over here, Unity might think that you're actually still in the middle of sending that interactive end, that you're clicking or hitting E or whatever it is that you're doing. So these buffers are just next frame events that give the tiniest little space to prevent from these interact events looping through each other. You interact with this somehow, sends to the buffer, sends to the door open state. Now that you're in the door open state, it waits here for another interact event, and it sends to buffer number two, and then sends back to this state. So this is just a little loop. Essentially, you could look at it like this. These buffers, if you just didn't pay attention to these, it's just these two states, essentially. It goes from door closed to door open. Okay, so in door closed, this is the position we want it in, right? This is the closed position. So what you could do is over here in initialization state, take care of any initialization here. So for us, for a door opening and closing template, you might want to get rotation from the owner and we'll store in the vector three, we'll call this closed v3. This is the place it starts in, so on initialization, we'll get what that means for it. And we're gonna say that this is in self, okay? So in door closed, we'll have a tween rotation and it'll go from current rotation to a local rotation using this closed V3. So for example, if it was open like this, that's its current rotation, right? So it'd go from current rotation to 
the closed rotation, which is what we got at the beginning here. But right now, that won't do anything. This door will just stay still because it never has anything to transition to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that right now. Leave this as is. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go over to door open and I'm gonna throw in a tween rotation. And it's gonna go from the current rotation to the open rotation. So our open rotation, let's set to a local offset. Now, if you look up here in our transform, you look at these rotation coordinates right here, right? If I open the door, you'll see that at 90 degrees on our y-axis is what we would consider open. So down here in the y-axis, I'll type in 90 and that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play. So I have my player controller and when I click on this door, it's gonna be sending it that interact event and we'll see what happens. There we go. And you can see that down here in our FSM, it transitioned over to door open. So now if I come back over here, click on the door again, it closes it. It sends it back to the closed state, which is where it has that animation to send to its closed rotation. So you can see how this blank interactable template can be used for a million things. So similarly, I can come over here, 3D object, and let's just make a sphere. We'll call this our light. And let's just bring it over here. I'm gonna turn this directional light intensity down. Okay, we're gonna make it kind of dark in here. And we're gonna take this, I'm gonna turn off the mesh renderer, and underneath it, I'm going to add a point light. Okay, so you can see it's kind of illuminating our scene. Now, here in this light, I could right click, paste template, blank template, interactable, and here in the standby state, you could do something like drag and drop this point light in here, game object, activate game object, and we'll say that it is deactivating it, but we'll have it reset on exit, so it'll turn on every time it leaves this state. So you can call this light off, this light on. So the thing that we're interacting with is this sphere collider here, and it should be receiving this interact event. So if I hit play, this light's invisible, so it'd be nice to actually put in a model of a lamp or a light bulb or something, but we know it's here right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and click, and you can see that it turns it on and off. So these are just a couple of ways that you can use the blank interactable template for your own projects. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.